Oh, okay, I think we're live here. So, let's get started. Need to uh, disable Discord real quick. And then we can hop right into it. Okay, so tonight I want to address something that I have um, neglected for, I don't know, 15 years, something like that. And that's kind of two things simultaneously. One is halfway to black. This is a shading or a shadow technique that I, I've known about. I know the theory. I've just never bothered to practice it. Um, the other one is um, having these value zones, which is really not, a, you know, that's, I'm aware of that and I, I think about it in my work, but um, perhaps not enough. Okay, so here's my value scale white to black and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up get my brush here and so we've got white and I think we'll set up these zones something like that Let me do a new layer. So roughly, these are the areas that I'm going to work with. And it might actually be wiser to separate. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, so then the other thing with halfway to black is basically when you're shading under this theory. Um, so let's, uh, we'll make a form real quick here. Uh, I guess we gotta do a drawing, right? My, there we go. All right, so let's uh, we'll draw a shape here. Something like this. Okay. So if our base value, and we'll start with this, let's say our, our base value is right, um, right here. So these, these are kind of, actually, these are sort of two competing theories. So one is, we'll say our, our base value is um, this color here. So we'll just fill that in. Go to the large brush. Waste no time. Where does this line up here? I don't remember where we color picked it from. Somewhere in there? Somewhere in here. So, <clears throat> we take this and we go halfway from here to black. So, that would land us somewhere in here, right? So, we pick that. And this is our um, shadow color. For this, may as well do it on a new layer so that uh, we can adjust these as need be. Okay, so this is not uh, particularly advanced or anything, this is just a, a technique that I just never bothered to really just take the time and practice in a disciplined way. Um, okay, 
so that's the first section there. We'll do another one here so that these uh, two shapes associate. And then we'll do the same thing on this one. And then we'll select a second uh, local value. And then we'll see how this works out. And I think in order for this to work, we may need to knock out the, uh, the outline. We'll play with that. So I think what this theory is supposed to address is just that question of, okay, what um, depth of shadow do I use on a given um, value, right? Like how, how far do I go? And I, I would say that this idea probably only goes so far as um, the material type being used. That some materials are going to act differently. Um, but uh, it's probably a good baseline. Okay, so let's do this again. We'll switch our value here. This is our shadow area on this guy. And we're saying all of this over here is in shadow. So that's kind of the, that's the underside of this um, object here. Well, returning to that idea, you know, I think there's a certain safety in knowing um, or having a, a system. Like, if if uh, if I follow the this formula, it's going to work, right? So I think that's kind of where this comes from. But so far, it's not you know, it's not that bad. All right, let's do another one. We'll start with a value let's go like right in here and we'll uh, paint that in this time so we actually know where we're talking about and uh, let's bring in another form maybe this is like I don't know some kind of alien arch or something I don't like, I don't like how that splits there, but I have this right here. And I'll have this recede in space. So <clears throat> now we'll go to our shadow layer and we'll go halfway to black on this one. So from here to here, we're going to end up right about here. Okay. And we'll just see how this works out. Let me know in the chat if you've been using this technique for some time uh, to any success. I'd be interested to hear thoughts on it. Um, I think I heard this from um, maybe it was Scott Robertson. It might have been Feng Zhu. Um, and both of those guys are pretty analytical uh, when it comes to how they approach their work. Uh, you know, they kind of have a system. And uh, I would say 
I have been less disciplined in that regard. I don't, I don't think that you necessarily need a, a system. It, it does help if you, um, if you formalize things, you know kind of where to go with, go with things. Um, it does make it easier on yourself. But it's not something that I've been, uh, at least not recently, particularly concerned with. Though I have, with this technique, been thinking, yeah, you know, I never, never really gave that a try. So anyway, that's, that's the whole point. Okay, so now we'll do, let's do a lighter color. Well, maybe we'll bring in a you know, background here that's got our ground plane. We'll do it darker. Let's do a darker color here. Okay, and then this will be... Hmm. Do we want to do... I kind of want the ground plane to be lighter. I don't know. Maybe it's just ingrained in me. We'll do we'll do this background thing as a darker color. I probably should have separated these elements out because now the shadows overlap. there get that all filled in and that could be like a crashed vessel back there or something That being in the background, we need like a like a big piece here. That's like part of it. Kind of tie those things together. So now let's go back up to our shadow layer. We'll select these parts. Get them cleaned up. Actually, we can turn off the shadow layer and just do, uh, just do the magic wand. That'll be a lot easier. In theory. Uh, wrong layer. That's part of the problem. Uh, here we go. these areas and then we're going to select our halfway to black so we're here the halfway is going to be roughly right there 
Alright, so start getting it in there. Let's grab this as well. That piece, he's good. Whoops. Did it again. Wrong layer. There we go. Switch back over. And we'll go back to our shadow layer. And paint these in again. Maybe this time we'll have that piece will be oriented the other way. And kind of towards us. And this one. And maybe just little shadow shapes in that. Let's see. Go bring bring this down to like a triangle, you know, down to a point in here somewhere. Maybe if I want to reference this like through through the park here, that might suffice. Something like that. And actually maybe this whole section we bring um, into shadow. Cut some wedges in there. So that's in shadow. Something like that. Maybe this cast a shadow here. Mm -hmm. ah, I don't like that. Now I think we need to address um, all the unused space. So do control shift I G, let's grab I'll go on this 
lighter color here. We'll go right there. And then uh, I'm going to deselect all of this because I don't want to uh, mess up what we did here. And see, we got a gradient or gradient uh, tool there. Um, we may as well fill it. And then we're going to delete all of this in our shadow layer. And we're right here, so halfway to black is going to be right about here. Okay, then we're going to bring in all of our shadows from these other objects. I don't want to do that. What am I doing? I want those connected. Like here, I'll we'll have to take this shadow color and fill it in where the shadow falls here. So that these are um, working together. for nature. <clears throat> it also gives us uh, you know, these associations of uh, texture here. This texture is going to associate to the texture over here since they are related. say so far you know there's there's no real plan for this scene but um, I would say that the the rule seems to work as far as um, this halfway to black thing try this a long time ago that's the question laziness I guess it's too 
too caught up. Well, there's so many things to learn, you know. You, you can just keep on approaching art with, from so many different angles. And maybe that's just my excuse. But you, know, you finally get around to those things that you're like, yeah, no, I should try that sometime. And I'm just trying to vary, vary the size of these textural things going on there. All right, so then this guy, let's get this to line up with our global light that we've set up here. And I'm curious how Multiply handles this. If you were to block in all of these color zones and then um, use Multiply, would you end up with the same thing? You know? Rather than going through the effort. I mean, I think it makes sense when you're considering that you're not always going to be working in a digital format. You might have to work... Um, or choose to work in a uh, physical medium and uh, then you, you have a guideline to, to follow there um, but it may not be there may be a faster way digitally that's really all I'm getting at there Okay, so now we've established a bunch of random piles of junk. Maybe we should bring this into um, something that has reference. It might, uh, it might be a good idea. Let me pull something up here. Okay, we'll pull 
pull up some faces here to work from. So I'm looking at this image right here. So that should lend itself pretty well if kind of these three different value zones. And we'll go with that. That he's, uh, he's interacting with this, with something. You know, there's life going on there. It's not just, um, it's not just uh, a static image. Should be kind of a mid, it would appear somewhere in here. I'll do this over top so that I can remove it if I want to. Clean up these shapes a little bit. Let's see, this is here. These are going to be interesting fingers. I can tell already. It's kind of an interesting pose of the hand here. Because his hands, you know, it's all these fingers are open. And it might be a good idea to uh, bring them together. 
Um, but we'll see. We'll see if we need to do that. Okay, now we'll do our uh, halfway to black with all these. So, here's our skin value, it's right here. Halfway. Somewhere there. Adjusted because these in the reference there, these two are actually touching right there. That's too far over. So we'll see about that. Face roughly. I don't get too lost in the details here. Just gonna block it in.
you can see them already kind of um, dialing back the opacity on that so I'm trying to stay true to the rule um, but have a little little bit of subtleness in it it's not um, completely all or nothing I think partly what the rule does uh, is it, uh, it it starts to categorize your values into these zones um, that are perhaps a little bit easier to uh, for the eye to follow. All right, so let's do one here. Let's select this. Let's go ahead and uh, let's merge all these down. So grab all these, merge down, merge down. Then we'll select this. Um, actually, we'll turn off contiguous uh, so that it's just that area. And I think we'll turn down the tolerance. That would probably help. Okay, yeah, something like that. So then here's uh, our value here. We started there, so halfway to black is right here. And uh, let's start working that. Oh, we need that selection. Did that for a reason. All right, we'll bring these in here. Uh, let's see, it's an interesting shape there. It's got like a little notch where it comes back around, like so. And then all of this falls in the shadow down here. Let's simplify these shapes here. this and some of this is going to be a, a little bit uh, invented here because it's, he does have like this can or something there maybe that's his tip jar I don't know but uh, at this part down here I got a little more uh, loose with the uh, silhouette and, uh, Some of this will be invented to compensate for that. And then, um, then just as far as you know, what I'm thinking with the shadow shapes, kind of, when you make this wedge, you're, you're implying where shapes meet. I, I know I've discussed this before, um, but he's got like these little flaps that come down and you could draw that edge like this you know um, but if you just leave this wedge that's enough information for the eye to know okay there's a shadow there that leads you know some form here and it comes off of this um, okay. and then Dude, actually his shirt kind of pops through here underneath. I didn't realize how much that um, was actually contributing to the, the overall image. Okay, and then he's got like a little bit of a collar here. All right, now we'll switch our color over to the whites and we'll do our shadow for that.
Uh, let me go ahead and extend this just a little bit more because it looks like we missed a little bit here. Hopefully we don't get this whole background. Oh, we don't want that. I guess I'll just manually cut those out like this. And this. And here. Okay. So now, here's our value for this, right? And we need to go halfway to black. So we're going to end up about here. And that seems, to me, that seems really dark. And um, after, after I do this method, I'm going to test something else, like a completely different way of thinking about it. Um, and I think that will be perhaps more beneficial. And this might be, you know, I, I talked about this before as being a method to, um, to uh, have the eye be able to follow um, the forms a little more easily. And I would actually say, now that we're implementing it, it seems to be more, in, in my estimation, a function of compressing your shadows into uh, similar zones uh, without allowing it to get too far into black. And if you notice that, um, you know, when you are working, um, especially in traditional medium, I find that uh, that when I go to add my shadows, um, it can get way too dark, like really quickly. Uh, and if, if you get too dark too quickly, then there really isn't much going back. Um, you're, you're kind of, you've gone too far. You know? um, that is, you know, in traditional medium. Of course, in uh, digital, you can, you know, keep finagling it till you kind of land somewhere um, workable. And I think that's partly why I've avoided this exercise for such a long time um, because it just with digital it has not really been necessary uh, for me to uh, master because you can come back you can come back to your values later in, in digital not a bad place to start. I don't know though. I'm not, uh, not entirely sold. He's got like a little beard thing going on here. Neat beard thing, guy. 
can put these in. Actually, you should converge a little more. string. You can do it. <laughs> What's the problem? I just does not want to go. Here, let's use the uh, mouse. When in doubt, use the mouse. There we go. And uh, we'll erase the hand portion here. There's like a divot there that it goes into. I guess I don't have to spell all that out. I could keep that a little more subtle. Otherwise, I'm kind of making that the focal point. Uh, I guess we can bring in a little bit more of these shapes here. Let's select that area so that we're working in a confined space there. some of these over. So we want to carry this shadow through onto those lighter values. Same here. Some shadows in there. And then if I come back down to this, Control Shift I, get my dark color here, and we'll maintain these shadows. in the area underneath the shirt. He's got like these straps that kind of are pulling everything together. And that's, that's what's going on there. This is under his chin, so it's got to have a shadow there. And then pick up the uh, 
the knack where that begins of the uh, instrument. Get these things all facing different directions there. And much of this here is actually, I think I initially got that shape kind of wrong there. There's like a little rest for his neck, or for his chin rather, chin rest. Is that what they call that? Must be. Chin rest. Bring this up here. And then I think we'll just kind of start cleaning up the whole thing. Tempt tempted to leave him with a kind of an alien head. I don't know. This is where the old concept art habits die hard. I mean, yeah, it's kind of cool, but what if he was an alien fiddler? Oh, that would be cool. Alright, I suppose oh, we could detail the fingers and all that stuff, but... What a waste. What a waste of a life. You know? Detailing fingers all day? I don't think so. Okay. If we have to. I think we'll clean this up here. A similar idea it probably doesn't pick up very much light you know being a darker tone like that one thing to consider with these is you don't always have to follow that kind of theory of um, you know top-down light and do everything kind of analytically certainly it's going to get you to a believable point pretty quickly but I find that uh, a lot of what adds the both interest and realism is to, uh, to break out of that and do some ex unexpected shifts in uh, in value. You know, sometimes I found that if I do the opposite of what I think would be rational, it comes out um, almost more believable. You know, like just just maybe that's bounce light, or um, or just the the forms aren't as um, they're not as simply uh, structured as um, as they seem to be in our head. Like we, we kind of simplify things, right? Like that's kind of the, the the job of our mind is to make it simple enough to understand. Um, but sometimes our 
rules about what we're seeing and, and why we're seeing it that way are actually not correct. They don't line up with reality. Um, so his head might look a little bit small. It's bothering me a little bit. Just a little. Now the shape of the eye, this is getting you know, in there too much here for the exercise, but the shape of the eye is always important. Dictates uh, dictates kind of what this character is thinking. If it's too high, let's see, let me zoom out here. Here, if we bring this over a little bit. So if you have too much, like if you if it's completely rounded at the bottom, then he's kind of looking up in a way, right? So bringing that lower lid up and then flattening this, the bottom of that curve. Um, to me, that brings like a certain amount of alertness to the character. And uh, zoom out here. And bringing the upper uh, eyelid too low uh, can do the opposite as well. So obviously, there's <clears throat> tends to imply surprise or um, uh, a certain intensity when you raise that upper eyelid you know so the more of a triangle of the whites of the eye that you get up here the more intense that look is right and so you bring that down and for this guy, you know, there's something about playing music, and I know, you know, I'm not that great, but I've played uh, a bit, and my friends always told me that um, you kind of go off into space. It's like your eyes glaze over, <laughs> and you're, you're like somewhere else, you know, you're in the music. Um, and so there's something about a, a skilled musician where they're engaging the audience and so they're looking at you you know they've got that look in their face that that um, you know describes the uh, the uh, kind of festive you know or the, like the moment you know what the the vibe is um, but then at the same time they're a little bit out there they're, they're a little bit lost in the music you know and so, you want to communicate that. At least I do. That's the. That's what I'm getting at here. So it's like somewhere. The, the, the look is somewhere in the middle of engaged. Engaged with you, the audience, but engaged with something. Uh, surreal and outside of the scene, you know, the, the music. So. But I should zoom out because if you do too much of this close-up, you get completely lost on what's happening.
like shift these over these grays. So I wanted to bring in a few gray uh, eyebrow there, but I might just uh, have it kind of fade. See eyebrows like that, which are kind of dark towards the center, fades out to white on the edges. Kind of interesting. Bring all of this back and darker there. And then here, he's got these, uh, these deep um, creases here. Don't want to get too crazy with those, but I do want to incorporate them. Soften this edge here. And harden this edge here. Do the same thing here. Zoom out and see what we've got. And let's see. I want to bring in this shape here. Shape this area up bit more and soften that light that I brought in. That is too small. <laughs> well, lucky we live in the digital age because we're just going to make it bigger. Not that much bigger. Maybe it's just the angle, or maybe it's uh, just too far back, like if we bring it over. There we go. 
Clean up, clean up. Everybody everywhere. And it is nice to be able to do that. We're not always weren't always able to do that kind of thing. Just, hey, I got this measurement wrong. I'll just move it. All right, one of these little fiddly bits. Let's get these little, like, jingles, little jingle bells or something. And here, this would be the case that I was talking about earlier where, you know, the material property completely breaks that halfway to black rule because these things are, um, they're reflective, so they're going to pick up the source light very brightly and then, um, you know, the reflections of the, the black and so forth and the surroundings are going to be very, really heavy and dark. So does not always work uh, precisely though I do think you know that wasn't a bad that wasn't a bad way to uh, to go about this I really think it kind of worked for that. Sometimes the uh, shift click doesn't work so well with the um, um, with the uh, pressure opacity. Is that what we're doing, Eric? Yes, it is. Yes, it is, sir. Okay, I'll do a new layer. G. I suppose. Well, let's just keep it simple. So here's our value right there. Let me grab my uh, tool here. Deselect this area of the face. And, uh, oops. Let me go lighter or darker? Let's go lighter. Just bring in. Mm. Do we like that? Do we not like that?
something like that. That head gets really kind of lost in that. Uh, background and so I'm going to bring out some of these details a little bit more Maybe a little too much on that nose there nostril And I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna go too heavy on that, but I do want to cast these a little harder. start to you know, push and pull, you know, moving things in and out, forward and back, you know the drill. And maybe you don't. If you don't know the drill, that's what we're doing. Uh, adding a little bit, a little bit more contrast. Now we're breaking that halfway to black rule. Uh, but you know it got us got us this far so take it take it for what it is And so here I'm just going to kind of bring these values together a little bit. I think the white is, you know, this is where I think the halfway to black is not that great. Is that um, the lighter values really probably should have um, a little more... Uh, a little less of a shadow, you know, because it's a light value, it's going to pick up more light, ambient light in the scene. More reflected light. And so it just, it just wouldn't quite act this way, you know. And do I want it that way, or do I want to soften the edge the opposite direction? That looks too linear. And this I might homogenize that, bring it all together. Um, same here. Those don't really need to be that far apart in value.
Okay, so earlier I had mentioned that there might be another method to approach this, and I think that that is the case. Um, and it's a it's another area that I've wanted to wanted to explore. I don't know if there's too much time to do it tonight, um, but that would be to uh, to pre-select our zones where these colors are going to, or where these values are going to be allowed to go. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a highlight on this instrument here. And then I think we could call it done. Hopefully I'm not uh, getting myself into this territory of uh, now I, you know, now you want to do more to get it all balanced, which totally happens. You know, it's like you have one little change, you're like, yeah, that'll be the last little bit, and then it kind of changes the balance of the whole image, and you feel like you've got to address it. You know? feel like it needs uh, like a little, little birdies flying around or something, a little butterfly. Okay, so um, we'll leave that there. Uh, we'll do one more little thing, one more little thing. Happy little rim light on the head. Just a happy little rim light there. And here and everywhere. Why not? We're going to find out very soon. Why not? Get it in there, and then I'll dial it back. And this is a, you know, one of these ideas of whether you want to articulate everything, you know, show every little nuance and form change, or if you want to. Uh, let the edges kind of fall off. All right. Hopefully we don't end up with a decision or a, you know something where you can't write, you can't quite decide, and so then you start playing with the with the uh, opacity. Like, well, I like maybe just a little bit of it, maybe a little bit less, and then usually when that happens, sometimes it's it's more of just a decision of uh, what would you rather have, and not somewhere in the middle. Right. 
then we'll do the opacity thing. I think I'm going to shape it up here a little more. Just like a little too round. Super shiny head now. Maybe give him a little comb over or something. That'd be fun. Nah, this guy has too much self-respect. He's going to shave it. Okay. So that's, uh, that was starting in with that halfway to black idea. And uh, then we got into blending, of course, you know, and, and then defining some of those shapes because uh, well, we wanted to draw the um, attention into the eyes. We need a little more, um, a little more contrast there. I just removed that, the, uh, catch light from his eye. I don't know if I want to remove that or not. That right there. And that just gives a little bit of life in the eye, right? Okay. Do we want another one? They're not always... Sometimes Sometimes you can overdo it because this eye, you know, this is catching like a bounce light, and then uh, this is being blocked by the bridge of his nose. And I guess you don't have to be that technical if you don't want to. You know, you can just design it however you want. Um, but uh, it works. this shadow in here. Uh. 
excuse me, so that it is um, clear that that's this cast shadow from this. Um, instrument. Violin, that's the word. Do we want to extend this up into here? That'd be kind of interesting. Bring that right up to the collar. There. I don't think it needs to be <clears throat> particularly detailed. You know, we don't have to uh, define all that. We can leave it kind of ambiguous. But some viewers like to see that. Not that we have to be entirely driven by that. Like you can make decisions on what what you uh, want to see there. Bring this shadow in from the shirt. There's also some kind of tie or something there. Bring those in, may as well. dude playing a violin or fiddle or whatever. Alright, let's uh, smooth this down here. I'm just going to darken this a little bit just because it's grabbing too much attention, I think. Right, so the other method that I was talking about would be to take these and um, put them into zones. And I, I kind of uh, alluded to that earlier here. And I want to play with that idea, though we're already uh, an hour and 40 in. I guess if we go in the same compositions, we'll, we'll take all this and we'll group that and make a new layer here merge this and what I want to do is take these areas and actually now that I've uh, adjusted it from that halfway to black rule to what I thought was more reasonable I think it actually may end up being almost exactly what um, well okay that's a that's a bit of a stretch. Maybe not exactly, but pretty close to um, what I was thinking uh, would be the alternative. And so let's let's see if that is in fact the case. So uh, the alternative being uh, these zones here. So this being. Our shadow value and this being our light value grab this in zone 1 and then zone 2 being here our shadow value here and our light value here and of course you know faded in between and then zone 3 here and here and uh, may as well finish what we started okay and then we're going to design the image broken out into these zones so we'll take this there's actually a really uh, quick way in Photoshop to do this. Grab all this here. 
and I have to remove this shadow area there, remove that, and add that. We'll do the same thing here. And by quick, I mean we still have to make our selections. So, sorry everybody, you've got to, you had to see this. Okay, I got that. And then this area there, and then here. Ooh, we we go all the way down there. <laughs> Let's just do that one with a lasso or a polygon tool. It's going to be a lot easier. Not too good with those uh, slow, steady lines. It's not what, it's not what they brought me here for. Okay, hit these guys there. All right, that looks like everything in the those white zones. <clears throat> so we're gonna do a new layer here. We're gonna make this is gonna be our mask. And um, I think what we need to do is do a, a gradient map, boop, right there. And we're gonna put that mask on there, yep. And then what you do with your gradient map is you select, this is your dark value. Okie dokie, and you take this one, this is your light value, right there, buddy. Okay. And what it should do is it should take your black, your, your darkest area is going to bring it up. Um, in this case, it appears that it actually wants this whole thing to be black. So we actually have, I think we need to do that first. So we're going to do control click on that. So we're going to go levels. We got to bring our darkest areas to black, which really, you know, it's pulling some of these areas, but really effectively we're saying this you know black and white a little bit of gray in between and then our white is right there okay then so that is actually much more extreme than I thought it was we may need to extend the the zones um, let's see if we move this up yeah it's it's more about the uh, the selection that we've made here, but we'll adjust that. Okay, so then the next area we'll do are the, well, we'll do the skin tones next. to articulate that thumb but uh, I don't know that that's really the focal point okay so do the same thing we're gonna do our uh, levels to bring the, the black level up white level in that control click that we're going to go to our uh, gradient map and we're going to select our dark value here whoops nope, here Boop. come on come on oh we're on the map that's why you have to you have to get off of the mask because it was selecting from the mask here and our light value here and then finally we'll do the black areas so in this case I'll just um, I'll just adjust our levels here crunch all these together so I can select that. 
mask. Um, and with this you can just go to the channels, so you control click your RGB. It's going to give you a selection based on that. It's going to select the white, so you want to do a control shift I to invert your selection. And I'm going to clean up some of this stuff here because I don't really want to affect all of that. All right, but that is what I want. And I don't, eh, we'll take that sleeve out. Same thing on the end of that sleeve there. Okay. So we, now we've got that selection. Add a little bit to it here. Uh, yeah, I guess that's fine. Same idea. We'll do uh, levels. Bring up the black. Bring the white that and then same mask gradient map and then make sure we're off the mask. The darks are gonna be down here and our lights are gonna be up here. And then the only real change we need to make is that the eyes and uh, the eyes need to be um, a different value. So we'll remove those from which mask was that? This one. And this actually I need to change to contiguous there, there. We'll just select a little bit here manually. back in so we want to remove that from here and here bring it into here and we might want to do the same thing uh, on the edges of the mouth and that sort of thing um, well I think you can see that this is similar to the halfway to black is not going to get us um, not going to get us all the way there you know it, it helps to uh, start refining the zones of uh, of the composition but uh, is is inadequate in terms of uh, rendering but let's see that's our skin there We can also adjust these now that we've got them set up. So first let me get the corners of the mouth here for uh, Okay, so we can adjust our ranges on these. Let's see, our skin here, gradient map. Open this up. And you can use gradient maps to, uh, you know, to bring in color as well. If that's how you want to do it. Um, 
I don't know that that's. Uh, I, I don't. I don't do that method too often. So I've done it a few times, but um, can't say that it that it's certainly not my norm. And you can grade these too, so it, it doesn't have to be, you know, this straight uh, transition. What you can do is you can take this over, you can add a new one in here. So you could you could add like a highlight, right? That's uh, maybe that goes more to that blue, and then you can tighten this up so that it only hits a you know a certain point there. And then we could say like <clears throat> maybe we want we want some flesh. Uh, you know, um, saturation in there, you know, on the where it terminates, where the shadow terminates. So we'll bring that and we'll just adjust it until it is where it needs to be. Now what this is not going to do for us is it's not going to give us the zones of, uh, you know, the color zones of the skin. Um, it's just going to deal purely with value. So if we wanted to move that into a, um, if we wanted to move it over to, uh, like say, this, the cheeks and the, the lips, you know, to kind of get that color shift there, it's not going to do it for us. Now we certainly are leaving this, this zoned area once we're getting into these colors. So uh, I have no excuse there. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the colors to be uh, interesting and reasonable. So with these uh, little sliders here, you can tighten uh, that transition, which in this case might be better. And I'll bring this value down a little bit. I think 
we need to go a little bit darker here. And maybe adjust. Oops. What do we have here? change our um, gradient map here on the on the cloth there's very little uh, uh, shift there put this in the yellow greens and we'll move that away from white Maybe to the cooler tones. All right, let's grab the uh, dark values here. Get our gradient map and we'll start playing with that. This could be, I think, could go darker. So that's a much more muted tone. And I think we'll probably uh, switch the, um, well, the violin, I think, needs to be a different color. a little bit of blue into that and then maybe a, yeah maybe a red brown red in the uh, in the shadow we can invert that if we want to see it'll do okay so that we can uh, step back with the um, with the uh, undo history if we want to. Let's bring this one in a little bit. Termination we want on that. This we want. I'm trying to get this uh, this subtle shift. 
Um, but this is just an interesting way to do it with a gradient map rather than with uh, you know just painting it directly. Um, Yeah, somewhere in there. You know, having that really strong highlight makes it feel, you know, almost plastic, which is, uh, you know, not desirable. If I can, here we go. Adjust that um, termination on that. Crazy. All right. I think we can just adjust uh, manually the areas that need to be warmed up. So we can do that with uh, overlay. I'll just give it like an orange. And it would be like the lips here. Let's go more towards the pinkish red. some light into the uh, whites of the eyes here. And I think we need to bring in some blue, uh, brighter blue to counterbalance the, the uh, the uh, kind of pink-ish tones on the hair areas there. We want to have those the little scruff come out as uh, a different value or a different uh, material altogether.
fingers, fingertips. All right, let's adjust the uh, this one. This one's bothering me. It actually does pick up quite a bit of, uh, of light and uh, saturation, but I do think there's like a there's like a terminator in here, uh, you know, on this edge that needs to be adjusted. And like I said, we you know we could switch these. We have it with a um, blue light and warm shadow, and you know it's kind of said you can cool shadows, uh, warm lights or whatever. You, know, you have them opposite. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, cooler colors tend to recede. Warmer colors tend to come forward. So I think that's why that tends to be the prevailing logic there. Um, but I think if you just, you have them, uh, if you have them be opposite, then, uh, then they uh, just make more interesting contrast. Just barely, just barely happening. And maybe uh, increase the darkness of this Terminator. Bring this up a little bit, or down rather, so it does fade in fact. Kind of flattening out that value, you know, that's Lighting out the darks so is what's happening there. just a little bit more um, color variation.
Okay, well, we didn't really stay in those zones too well, did we? But we can see what we've got um, in terms of value. Um, let me bring this up because this is contributing a bit here. So here's our here's our skin there. So I'm going to just brush in some of this. And brush out some of it here. If it will let us. Zoom out to get. Here's our overlay. I'm just going to blend in some of this a little bit here. Zoom in here. Get a little closer.
just making some decisions here about um, how we want to handle the light in this area. Okay. There's all these little relationships between the parts, you know, like this, just his, um, his smile brings these, uh, brings these muscles up here and then the skin compresses here around the nose and, uh, That's gonna put these little areas of the skin here that come up, point back down, so they, as you can see, they would have rested down here, but they're being pulled up. And it is important to get those relationships right um, because the, you know, the look is not just the shape of the mouth and the and the eye, eyebrows, even though those are, you know, in that kind of cartooning tradition is the most uh, kind of iconic indicators of um, the uh, expression. Um, but practically speaking, you know, all of these parts relate, and so they don't move independently of each other. You have to get them to work together and um, I mean, understanding that it's really just a matter of time and study and you know experience and, and capturing different expressions you'll you'll start to see uh, how things relate and then you also kind of develop your own kind of shorthand on how to um, how to express those things in an image. I think anyone who's watched before would know that I typically just jump in selecting the colors, you know, usually pretty wild with the color choices at first. Um, and then dialing it in as we go. Um, this being quite a different approach to do, uh, to come in with the um, gradient maps where we're really making these decisions up front about where um, where the uh, hues and saturation shifts based on uh, the value uh, it's really all the gradient map is doing is it um, you reassign a value or a uh, a color really to a portion of value and I've seen uh, to a decent effect artists who employ that to start in grayscale like we did and then um, come back around to implementing color similar to what we did though I will admit that this is not um, my usual technique and so uh, I don't think that I come to it with the same uh, uh, same confidence as someone who, who does this technique regularly. Uh, but anyway, I thought it would be interesting, fun to try. All right, let me zoom out here. See what we got. Oh, excuse me. Hold back a sneeze there. So 
I think I'm going to compress these a little bit after all that work of getting them uh, separated. I'm going to darken them up. in a bit as well. This doesn't need to be such a stark uh, highlight there. Color that light a little bit. And this nose here. Shift over more towards the reds. Bring a little bit of that warmth into the cheeks. There's this interesting. I mean, it's partly, I think, the way the image is toned, that the white balance on it, but there's this interesting kind of yellow-orange in his fingers. That it kind of bothers me a little bit, because it just doesn't seem right. But uh, I'm going to bring it in there and see what happens. I don't want to get too crazy with this, but I'm, I'm just trying to get a little bit of warmth in the transition on the fingers. Um, just to give them a little more fleshy life to them. knuckles just a little bit. I don't want to go crazy with that. You know, you don't want to you don't want to push these things too far, you know, where the the hands become this weird uh over accentuated um you know all the little and so forth start to become important and they 
they really just aren't. You know. In fact, I'm going to zoom out and uh, start to deal with this on a larger level. Get this relationship between these worked out here. There's some overlaps here that, that are important, I think, to get um, a clear sense of the orientation of the hand. I'm trying to work that out.
Hmm. There's still a few things to work out there. Let me zoom out here and see if we can make sense of it. Funny how much of a difference that uh, was, you know. Even though I was kind of thinking, yeah, I didn't feel like we really did much there. You know, kind of noodled around, tried to figure out, you know, how to make that make sense. But ultimately, um, that is quite a difference from from where it was. Okay, I do think what I'll do here is. Uh, I'm going to round the form out just a little bit. Maybe just change the local color for these knuckles. And then cut into that a little bit. Um, I think the relationship here is interesting. You know, where these shapes are. It doesn't, uh, it's almost like too, too much is going on there, you know. And the shape of the finger, I think, is going to make a difference. Because this is actually um, not quite coming towards us, but it's um, much more uh, kind of linear shape there. It's not, it's not a, what's the word? It's getting late, I'm getting tired. <laughs> it's not uh, it doesn't wrap back down around, away from us. Uh, it kind of comes down here. And then... Terminates. Almost, yeah, almost straight on. that overlay and get a little get a little color in there. Overlay. Uh, let's go more towards the yellow. Almost makes his fingers look uh, more grimy than anything. it on, on that pinky and maybe grade it over. That might make a little sense there. I 
Yeah, I don't want it to look like he's dipped his hands in iodine, though. His fingers are particularly cold. Let's switch that. We'll go with a blue and we'll pull some of that warmth out. Let's see how that works for us. They wouldn't be, you know, they're not too fleshy. You get a little bit of redness depending on the compression and so forth, but it's so kind of bony, you know, parts of the body. It's just, I'm going to do a little bit of hashing on this. I don't think I like that direction. Maybe bring it in. just need to be kind of flattened out. Just you know, reposition it, get it to feel different. A little more, maybe uh, homogenized. You know, one just combine those shapes. He's not, he's not holding it correctly then. You've joined in tonight for the artist struggle. All of this for what? I think I prefer that there.
Yeah, it feels slightly more expressive to me than the just copying the um, reference. Well, I don't know that we accomplish anything with that layer. Maybe this just needs to be flattened out there. And this needs to be flattened out here. I should practice hands more, huh? <laughs> That's the moral of the story, I think. Just want to get those uh, hands to be, you know, kind of saying something, right? Like contributing to the. Seen here. I think I'm going to be happy with these tonight. We'll see. I'm not sure what that would take. You know, the reference, his finger is actually kind of like pushed up against that bow, you know, so tightly that it's, uh, that it's kind of deforming it there. And I was avoiding doing that. But uh, maybe that's more the answer, right? Like having this thing, kind of like what I was saying with the face, you know, having this relate to the rest of it. A little bit of deformation of the skin there. Actually, this comes, that fold comes this way. Just seems counterintuitive. Okay, I think we should probably end it here. Before I go, uh, go crazy on these uh, fingers. Might be a little late for that, actually. <laughs> May have already done that. It's just telling me that it needs something.
Alright. We'll end it here. With whatever we got. <laughs> Little saucy figure. Alright. Well, that was interesting. Uh, testing a couple different um, concepts there. Um, the halfway to black technique and then the value zone um, technique. And I think both are uh, valuable. Um, At least, especially for block in. Though, I'll have to play with them some more because I feel like I, uh, you know, I have to cheat those systems to make them work for me. Which means either I um, am not using them correctly, or um, they only they only work for us so far. Right. Um, Okay. One last ditch effort here. We'll grab this value. And we'll bring it on the top plane here. And then we'll grab this dark value. And we'll bring it in the bottom planes. And we'll just let it let it be. Take this dark value, bring it into the transition point. I don't love it, but I think that it is better. <laughs> it still looks kind of deformed. Poor guy. Okay, I think that's where we need to just need to stop. All right, so thank you for joining in tonight. Um, this was kind of fun. You know, I don't usually do uh, figures that much. It's not my. Uh, I don't know. I, I I like doing everything, but. Uh, I think environments um, tend to be more of my comfort zone. Um, I do want to get uh, more time in with um, these values here, these different systems, because I do recognize that I'll, oftentimes, excuse me, my work, um, or at least to my eye, uh, it has uh, something's something with the materials uh, I want to address I want to get uh, a little um, a little more dialed in and I have some ideas about what that may be um, but uh, you know I think it would just be a matter of time and practice and uh, you know addressing some of the areas that uh, I would say that I have not been um, uh, neglected would be probably the appropriate word you know there are areas that just have not been important enough to need um, in the everyday 
and uh, important enough though that they would change I think the way that um, change the way that I deal with uh, particularly value um, all right well I think this is a good place to stop I'll zoom in there I'll go full screen so you can see what we've got there's our uh, musician bard I guess that's what you call him. Um, and uh, yeah that's it for tonight so yep I hope that you were following along and uh, had some painting of your own you know project that you're working on um, and that you made some good headway on that uh, of course if you have any questions uh, each week feel free to throw them in the chat um, I also you know I will often post these on art station um, not not too soon I usually do a recap of you know about a month's worth of them um, and uh, you know any any comments or questions or whatever that's fine you can ask there or you can ask in the chat on each week um, we, I do these every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern uh, so that's it for tonight thank you for joining in and uh, have a good night